Hello everyone, it's me, and today I'll be doing genre theory recitation. So, on top of that, I decided to not do this video now. I was conflicted actually in in terms of whether I want to present this presentation or not, but I I did this presentation not too long ago. And I was going to save it for another time, but therefore I decided to do it now. And it, since it's already been done, so I might as well present it as it is. So I did present in front of the class, but I'm presenting on here as well. So the genre I picked science fiction and Sci-fi is a genre that portrays depictions of an imagined future in terms of scientific or technological advances as well as exploring major social, political and philosophical or environmental changes. So sci-fi does cover a lot of things to do with the future or do with the present that might become the future so it explores with time as well so. and explores major issues that might affect society right like now or maybe in the past or something so there's theories on that as well comparing like genre commentary or political commentary or social commentary like all those things so the generic conventions that make up a sci-fi include heroes, villains, quests, advanced technologies and unfamiliar beings and locations. So heroes are like protagonists who are there to save the day or save humanity. Villains like maybe the alien or monster or robot that's trying to take over the world or something and as far as technology like technology we have never seen before or has not even existed as far as we know because it's set in the future and unfamiliar beings are like aliens monsters as i said before and location that like, set in on a spaceship or maybe outer space or something set in a different planet that we've never heard of so settings well on to that i'll get on to settings now so futuristic setting obviously because of the time frame but it can explore with time as well it can set in the present but the characters in their mindset set in the future or they explore with different tense of time basically passages of time and there's spaceships space slash planets alternative versions of earth parallel universes dystopian worlds and different dimension so sci-fi often has scientific visionary comic like comic strip like imaginative images so it's very visual and very very visual it's very visual and very like you know it's like they do tend to film a lot of landscapes that look a bit different or a bit more futuristic i would say or, and they do like very galactic some of them are like galactic or maybe the milky way some to say film that so they have very visual images of so very prominent like this middle one for example to have to look as futuristic as possible for it to be a sci-fi so they achieve this through visual effects and the use of advanced technology yeah, and you can use green screen as well to get that effect, but green screen you need to 
download the image from the internet and then you're happy to go. I did make a sci-fi film with green screen included when I was with my film club. So, oh, I am still going to the film club. So that was like a few years ago now. You can use green screen from the comfort of your own home or blue screen if the clothes, sometimes they do blue screens or visual effects. Sometimes they use this CGI or computer graphics or something to create the futuristic effect. So robots, aliens, futuristic gadgets, shadows, cause you see a lot of shadows in sci-fi films. Like this picture here, is a shadow here, a man, he's in a red light but you don't really see much of him because there's half of him is a shadow basically. And there's the one in the spaceship, I think he has a shadow too. And there's planets and spaceships. So the film I decided to discuss is Arrival. I wrote an essay about it as well, so that covers it as well. I managed to get the essay done like yesterday evening and I wrote an everything about it in greater detail but I'm not going to show you the essay because you know I can't do that i rather not do that so so the genre is it's mostly a sci-fi containing elements of a drama mystery and thriller and it's directed by Denis Villeneuve and it stars Amy Adams Jeremy Renner and Forrest Whitaker. The film grossed $100.5 million. So it's nominated for eight Academy Awards, winning for Best Sound Editing, and it's based on a short novel. Story of Your Life by Ted Chiang. So the film is about a linguistics professor who's enlisted by the US United States Army and she leads a team of investigators, as you know, it's most of them are scientists are actually, to learn how to communicate and decipher the language of the extraterrestrial aliens before tensions among nations could lead to war, or potentially lead to war. So she takes a chance to unravel a mystery which could have consequences on her life and mankind. So this blog thing that I meant read the paragraph underneath all that bio is basically what the sci-fi film according to theory consists of consists of all these things so she's a linguist professor she's in the science industry basically her her subject area is a science area and she's enlisted by the US Army and she's going to communicate with those aliens and decipher the language. So she's going there to learn about them, which to try and attempt to make an alliance basically. And they could unlock her path basically. But I can't give you too much. The film's actually on Netflix, so I would recommend you watch that first before I give you any spoilers on that. So her taking a chance of a mystery. So the mystery is that these pods were randomly in 12 different locations. And the scientists are trying to work out why nobody knows. We still don't know. But consequences is often spoken about in sci-fi films like having the consequences can lead to problems that might affect humanity forever so she could be she's basically trying to take she's taking a pun on her, not on her own life not just on her own life but mankind as well so 
yeah it's all about what you do your actions so imagery is touchdown so basically the heptapod ship is shaped like a smooth stone turned to, on its side hovering above the green landscape and grey clouds in the sky. So Louise and Ian both enter the vessel. So the heptapods who are not from Earth have sent their purpose awaiting for a mystery to be discovered. So beginning with the end, so the film starts at the end where Louise's daughter falls ill and eventually passes on. So the imagery creates a connection between the audience and the character. So straight away, the film sets the tone to understand that character. And so we feel connected with her, or we can relate to her. So the film does that very well. So the story has not happened for Louise yet. So ironically, she doesn't. The turn of events has not happened. It's because she's imagined her own future, which might be key to say that that must be the weapon in the film that she used. If you know what I'm talking about, they said the alien told her that she has the weapon. Might be that she can travel she can trans she can trans think about time basically she can go from transfer her mind from the past to the future or she can visualize her own future accurately basically so the shadows represent the harsh reality Louise will have to accept her daughter will die and she will have to move on. So those shadows, shadows are often used in sci-fi anyway because you know it's a reflection. It's basically your own reflection you're in. We always use shadows in many other things as well like horror. Shadows are very good for picking up people's feelings and emotions. It gives them, it's basically a reflection of your own self. That's what a shadow is, really. And seeing that your own shadow does sum it up, like how you're feeling. and Just it's a reflection of your own self, whether you're a good person or not. It's just a reflection of who you are, really. Or an, or an outline of who you are. So black and white, so inside the shell, the only colours used are black, white and grey. So these colours give the theme of balance and duality. It's between good and evil, human, non-human. The grey signifies the opposing sides should be one union. So the grey represents the balance, basically. And black and the white are both the yin and the yang if you ever came across that before <clears throat> so there's something called the binary opposition which is basically a language it's a theoretical model that shows that language does make sense basically it just tells you that language makes sense in terms so i said between good and evil, man or woman, human or non-human, black, white, because they're supposed to be very practically opposites, polar opposites of the spectrum, basically. So you get those polar opposites, or hot and cold, or something. It's basically, or fire and water, or bio ice, some let's say. This is just an example of what I'm giving. So you get what I mean by that. So geometric shapes. So squares and circles are prevalent in this film. 
So the square represents structure and rigidity in Louise's life because she's her life is basically a routine. So it gives her structure to what she's going to do in her day. So she's not really worrying about anything. She just follows what her routine tells her. Routine is basically what your routine. So basically, everyone has a routine. So I think I have noticed in some cycle. So I wouldn't say every time that there are structure shapes. Shapes do have meaning, you know. Some films have shapes tend to have meaning. Like a triangle could represent one person being chased by two people, basically. Or being like a love triangle, so one person and another person. So two men are in love with the same woman, like that, for example. And circles represent it by the aliens that they have a systematic view of time adopted by humans. So their time is quite non-linear. So hence the story is non-linear. It's a circular narrative, basically. So the story is not just about how they perceive time. So Louise's life kind of changes from there when she meets those aliens. So, time revolves around a clock and going round, we just live circular life basically, we don't, we don't have a, I think time is basically non-linear in aliens world, but in human world we're like a square or rectangular, so we live in a like a rigid cycle, right? Basically, but we're not. <clears throat> so time. So when a, a linear narrative is basically a line, and a circular narrative is basically is basically non-linear or circular. So here are the images. So see the square it's like a round this square is not really a square it's a square rectangle sorry my bad rectangle so it's a rectangle but it's a very circular rectangle it's very very soft the edges are quite soft so this like scene shadows the color of black white and gray are used as a color theme scheme here and these are the shapes that I mentioned in her office. It's like this is her life, basically. And the two heptapods are like a shadow. It's basically they're placed. There's a video I found from Studio Binder. I might have to leave that in the description for you to watch. These two aliens are floating above, are in the shadow. They're like a mis mysterious creature that just arrives from Earth, but we don't really know how they got there, and when they got there, or anything like that. We don't even know the, how they manage the reasons, what the theory is for them to go to these particular places so they do represent a kind of a mystery thing and these ships to so shape the ship like I described before and these chairs have squares and so I said the shadow like basically you see the shadows of her looking at her own so her reality is going to be dawned on her basically and the circles the communication basically so they communicate in a circular narrative with well, through these imageries images that depict graphic language there was this article I read 
that the man managed to find how they do the language, I think it's through coding, and gives him a select type of language. So they create, they must have created that through set design or through production. This is that before, during the post-production, or maybe production phase, maybe even pre-production, because they might have planned it out first. So the aliens, is that mise-en-scene? previous picture that I showed you this the mise en scene is very important as well because what's in the frame and how the frame is been set or how the frame has been placed that props costume design like visually how it visually is presented and these this is ship here. And this is her having a flashback of her daughter. But she doesn't notice her daughter. And yet, but she sees this girl. And she's in all she's always in her dreams, basically. And human. I think she's trying to say that she's human. This is the bit where she communicates she's human. So the themes and issues, so this is quite a big topic. This is where the whole theory comes in, most of it. In terms of ideology and social commentary. So division is, I found this article saying that the word alien originates from the Latin with alias, meaning other. So. So they're basically an other breed or other being that we don't really know what exact type they are. So the film is about overcoming division between species and nationalities as Louise will work for her colleagues around the world to communicate with the aliens in their pictographic language. The theme of immigration is reminiscent to what was happening in the United States as America's first president. So the, Ameri so the president is actually a, pro a staunch supporter of basically having American people first. So it's basically about white Americans. So you know, 2016, about Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, that election in the United States, Trump was elected so people had to support the fact that he, some people supported him because he believed in America. He said America's great in every way, shape or form. And it did cause division among countries, This the country itself. And even world leaders were starting to go against him as well. But some politicians were not really agreeing with his policies, basically. So it's about that as well. And he wants to make allies with Russia and China and North Korea as well, which is quite hard to do. It's quite, because they're quite, you know, robust, corrupt countries themselves anyway. So, so that did cause division, um, not just among, because he was quite racist, because even though he's always denies being racist. So it caused divisions among the left wing, right wing, even if you're a Christian or a Muslim, or if you're black or white, many things. Anything that does not support anything he is. That's why the country was div divided over. So it's suffering. So it's a subtle, so it's, subtle in terms of its theme but it does present that louise does gain that ability to see the future through learning the hepatopods language and understand her, of her fate the fate of her and ian's daughter 
dying at a young age. So the consequences of her deciding to marry Ian and having a child with him dictates the outcome of our choices, whether it's better or worse. So exploring consequences, whether it's good or bad, to the choices you make and how it can affect the people around you. So that is a common theme in sci-fi films. So there's a lot of sci-fi films that explore the choice. So a theme of language is clearly explored as we follow Louise's journey to into understanding Hepzibah's language among along with every other country. So all countries, all linguistics linguistics experts have to learn this language some for another so basically the language language could have the power to destroy or bring help because if you don't know what they're saying it can destroy or if you misinterpret it it can lead to catastrophic consequences so it can like war for example so the film indicates if we don't understand the language one is communicating it could lead to the forces to retaliate so in the film china is the was the first country to rage war against the aliens so and the aliens basically um were that they're, they're not harmful in any way shape or form but china still raged war against them. And it did cause problems as well because one of the aliens does die in the film. But if you haven't seen it, I won't go there for you. You might have to watch it yourself. So I kind of spoiled it already. So China is quite, it's kind of a messed up country really in terms of its government. And they're mainly communist, but they have capitalist elements to how they govern so basically i think us the us are always trying to deter in terms of china's policies and things because some of their policies are just ridiculous really like they claim to own certain territories like hong kong because that's why the I think that's why partly the protest happened in Hong Kong because China was set, claiming that their territory, they want to be independent from China, to be their own country. Because it was ruled by the British, British until 1997 when they handed it over to China. But the people want Hong Kong wants to be an independent country. I think there's a few others, but I'm not sure which ones there are. But I think China tried to claim they own certain territories. There are some countries that are clearly independent, but China are claiming they own them. And they own every political, everything about it, basically. And the US are kind of targeting them, and they feel threatened by it. So they're kind of different on certain policies. And there's, room, there's lots of news about them, like corruption abuse of power basically and all those i think they had an economic boom in the late 90s early 2000s and i think that's partly why they're not really getting along as allies because you know i think they did struggle to be allies with each other to two countries so the t time is a theme that I have mentioned before. So they have to see, receive, perceive time in a non-linear manner compared to how humans do it. So it allows them to alter their choices in order to obtain a better outcome for the future. So Louise's choice to discover her own future is not due to regret and she wastes no time in closing in on her daughters. So the future wastes no time in doing that because she's clearly going to see that event or witness that event in the future 
because she already knows what's going to happen. Because I think it had to happen. It's not just something she wanted to happen. It had to happen. The time is plays around with time travel slightly. So duality and balance is a theme. So opposing forces are work, are made to work together to create a balanced environment. So Ian specialises in natural sciences, physics, and Louise specialises in humanities, linguistics. So they're both of different genders. As we all know, Ian's a man, Louise is a woman, and they're made to work together in that project. So Colonel Weber explains the reason for them to be working together on site. So because in the first scene, when they first meet each other, they didn't see they didn't see eye to eye. And that's why they're supposed to work together. Because they're of different fields, different areas of life. So they're just completely different people. So moreover, the difference between Louise and Ian is further emphasised in the language used for their narrations. So while Louise is subjective, she, because she uses emotions and emotive language and metaphors, and Ian is very systematic, and his use of terms, so he tends to use technical terms that relates to his job or his profession. Yeah, his profession. So, uh, however, despite their opposite way of thinking, it's clear that both, they both need each other in order to succeed in the task of communicating with the heptopods. So finally, yeah, theme of duality is reflected in the names of the heptopods given by Ian, Abbott and Costello, a popular comedic duo characterised their opposite personalities of each man. So basically they're famous, I don't know much, but I know they're a famous comedian duo because one of them's very extroverted, the other's introverted. I think that's what they are. So here are the references so that I found these this information. Now I'll leave the studio binder video for you to watch about how the director manages Denis Villeneuve manages to achieve both fear and intrigue through balancing those two extreme emotions or extreme buzzes basically. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in another one. Bye.